What's up perverts welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be on nba 2k22 and putting together a team of players that have been romantically involved with the jenners and kardashians i've seen arguments online about whether or not the jenner boyfriends could win a championship together and it looks like they have a fair chance the nba has been passing around the family since before lebron brought a championship back to cleveland so we have a broad lineup of nba greats and nba players with serious mental health issues we have one of the biggest finessers in nba history with chandler parsons next up we got a man brave enough to marry a porn star chris Humphreys. We've got the 77 overall Jordan Clarkson. Our only center on this team is going to be the second man to get married, the very faithful Tristan Thompson. After Tristan, Chloe briefly dated Rick Fox, a man who probably doesn't have enough energy to cheat on her twice a week. Our first 80 plus overall player, D'Angelo Russell. Some more height is added to this team with the 6'10 Lamar Odom, which I pulled from the all-time Clippers team. I'm really looking forward to these next two players' performances with Kyle Kuzma and Ben Simmons. Our first 90 overall player is going to be Blake Griffin in his prime. The man who is currently dating Kendall Jenner is the 91 overall Devin Booker and the highest overall player on this team, the 92 overall James Harden. My team did not have enough players, so I went into free agency to add some size and girth to this team. I picked up Willie Cauley Stein since he is possibly the only man in this game with face tattoos. That is until Brittany Griner gets out of prison 10 years later. And another center who fits the criteria of this roster perfectly, Taco Fall. He is very big and very black. His dick is probably so big every time he gets an erection, he gets a migraine. I went ahead and put them into a My NBA season, and this is a starting five the CPU put together for me. But to make sure they get a good postseason ranking, I made some adjustments to my personal liking. I replaced Rick Fox with Lamar Odom, so now our three through five is 6'10 and up. Prime Blake Griffin should do well as a center in today's NBA, and I know that Ben Simmons is very overpowered in 2K, especially on defense, so he'll be our starting power forward. I forgot to mention this, but I put this team on the Pistons. I released all the past players into free agency, so it'll be interesting to see where their two above average players end up. But I'm going to rebrand this team entirely, which I think they're long overdue for. Their team name is a Piston, but their logo nowadays is just a basketball very creative. Their logo used to be a horse and I thought that was because they used pistons to kill livestock. Let alone the team is in Detroit, one of the poorest and most dangerous cities in the NBA. The only positive note of this team being in Detroit is that they are thousands of miles away from keeping up with the Kardashians. But just to be safe, I moved them to the furthest away destination on the map, the suburbs of Montreal, Canada. I went into the community team designs and looked up Montreal and there were some realistic designs and then there were these. Some horny Canadians team logo is just this girl with her ass out. Here are the ball hogs not a bad design i just feel like that pig is going to take advantage of me at any given opportunity we have the montreal mean muggers and i'm sure the creator funky fresh slept like a baby after uploading this but i chose the montreal beavers it has some relevance to the area they are in and the only way my players will get any action after representing this team is through the holes in a truck stops bathroom stalls i went ahead and simulated the entire season and we did pretty well we were first in the conference and second in the power rankings it's hot white boy season because we got luca as the mvp john Josh Giddy as a Rookie of the Year and Kevin Love as the Sixth Man of the Year. I thought it was odd that I didn't get Executive of the Year after signing the players that I did. I was beaten out by Cody Toole, the GM of the Nets. Blake Griffin was awarded All-NBA Second Team. The Nets only had Kyrie Irving finish All-NBA Third Team. And we had Ben Simmons finish on the All-Defensive First Team. But here's the reason the Nets GM beat me. They signed the former number one pick, Cade Cunningham. We finished three games ahead of the Nets, but it would still be interesting to go up against this team in the playoffs. Our leading scorer is Ken Kendall Jenner's boyfriend, he had 23 points per game, followed by James Harden with 22 points per game and led the team in assists with 9 per game, and Blake Griffin was 3rd in scoring on my team with 21 points per game and led the team in rebounds per game with 10. And we're up against the Bulls, which are a good team, but they don't really stand a chance against our roster. We beat the Bulls and the Hawks, so now we're going up against the Brooklyn Nets just like I wanted. In the West, the number 1 seed Grizzlies are going up against these 6 seed Warriors. The semifinals and finals will be one game elimination, The Grizzlies and the Beavers will have the home court advantage in this game and with injuries off the Grizzlies are stacked in 2k but the Warriors are also better off with James Wiseman playing center. I think the Grizzlies might have taken the Warriors out this year if they had a healthy John Morant but either of these teams would make an interesting matchup for the Beavers. I'm going to let the computer simulate the semifinals and finals and watch the results. The Nets are starting Kate Cunningham at the shooting guard and their top two players are better than everyone on my team but we have much better depth. The first thing I notice about this game is that my coaches are sitting inside the media tables. I'm surprised Kyrie Irving was let into the country but James 
James Harden goes down the court, breaks his ankles, but James isn't done with him. He gets the ball on a backdoor cut and gets the first points of the game with a dunk as Kyrie flies by him. Kevin Durant catches the ball on a fast break and makes a pull up jumper despite James Harden's incredible defense. James gets his second dunk of the game after he comes off a screen and is wide open. Kevin Durant is either fouled or flopping, but regardless, he makes another pull up jumper. The Beavers were looking for an alley oop to Blake Griffin, but he was pushed around by two men inside. I don't know if they're calling fouls today. Kevin Durant comes off the screen and again, there's a lot of contact inside, but they don't call anything. He still makes a shot and puts the nets up too. Lamar Odom shoots an open three and is already running down court celebrating, but he misses. But Tristan Thompson is there to clean up. The game is tied at six. Blake Griffin turns over the ball inside and the nets push it up to Kevin Durant, who gets another layup to bring the nets up too. The nets are playing some mind games with Devin Booker. They just leave him wide open. He misses a three and the score is eight to six at the end of the first quarter. It's Kyle Kuzma time. They clear out the whole entire right side of the floor for him, yet he goes to the left and gets blocked by Andre Drummond. Ben Simmons has a mismatch with Seth Curry guarding him in the paint. Joe Harris comes down to help and he just slaps Seth Curry on the ass and they call a foul for that. Devin Booker gets his first points of the game after he comes off a screen and is wide open for a three pointer. Kevin Durant takes the lead back again after he makes a post move on Devin Booker. The Nets are inbounding the ball. D'Angelo Russell is guarding Kyrie Irving but just gives up mid play and Kyrie hits an open jumper. Kevin Durant misses a leaning jumper but Andre Drummond is a man amongst light skins. He gets an easy put back. D'Angelo Russell is driving to the paint. Nick Claxton comes to help but they call a foul on Kyrie Irving. He knocks down both free throws. Kind of makes up for what Kyrie Irving does on defense when he can do stuff like this. Lamar Odom looks like he's on crack. I don't know what type of defense that was. The Brooklyn Nets are now up seven, but he makes up for it by hitting a corner three and he brings the lead down to four going into the second half. The players of the half are Kevin Durant with 12 points, three rebounds, and Tristan Thompson with two points and seven rebounds. Lamar Odom shoots another corner three, but he keeps walking away after the shot goes up like he's going to hit it. James Harden misses, but Tristan Thompson Thompson is there to clean up. He puts it back and gets fouled. He brings the lead down to two. The Beavers leave the only white man on the court open for a three. Never a good idea. And Joe Harris is evolving right before our eyes. He drives and hits a shot right over Devin Booker. It's a seven point game, but James Harden finds Tristan Thompson open for an alley-oop. Tristan is now hot and open, but James Harden decides to shoot it with three men around him. The Nets push it ahead to Seth Curry, who is open for a three, but instead he settles for a two pointer. James Harden is cold, but it doesn't stop him from isoing Kyrie Irving. He gets fouled while shooting and then gets a nice Nice firm grip on Kyrie's chest. Steve Nash is looking retarded horny over there. Ben Simmons all of a sudden isn't afraid to shoot a jumper with a six footer on him. Afterwards, the Beavers find him again in the paint. He dunks it and the Nets now only have a one point lead. But 2K Andre Drummond is like prime Shaquille O'Neal. He gets an alley-oop 360 dunk. But the Beavers and Nets are just trading buckets. James Harden drives to his left and gets a layup. At this point, Ben Simmons is going to be the player of the game. I don't know who this man is, but he keeps scoring. The Beavers now have a one point lead. Kyrie breaks Harden's ankle with a simple standstill move but then dribbles it off someone's leg. They find Booker down court and he finishes through contact. The Beavers now have a three-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Blake Griffin hits his weird little shot and brings the lead up to five. They go for an alley-oop in heavy traffic which gets turned over. They find Kyrie Irving for a three in transition and the lead is now down to two. Andre Drummond blocks this shot and it goes off this girl's face in the first row. On the inbound, Blake Griffin is wide open under the rim but they decide to give it to Ben Simmons on the three-point line but this version of Ben Simmons can just go in the paint and do this. Kyrie has a nice move under the basket, but they call a foul off the ball, so this ends up being a three-point play. Cade Cunningham sends D'Angelo Russell flying, but nothing is called. Ben Simmons is fouled on a fast break layup, and he actually goes ahead and hits two clutch free throws. I guess the refs didn't want to call anything until the fourth quarter. Cade Cunningham is fouled here and hits both free throws. James Harden breaks Joe Harris, then LaMarcus Aldridge misses a three, Blake gets the rebound, but is blocked by Joe Harris of all people. Kyrie ends up breaking Lamar's ankles, which clears the paint for Cade Cunningham to get a shot up and take the lead with a minute and a half in the game. The Beavers have to call a timeout. That was a mess. I haven't seen that many ankles on the ground since the 2013 Boston Marathon. Out of the timeout, Devin Booker goes at the rookie and hits a mid-range shot to take back the lead. Kevin Durant goes at Lamar Odom, but he is stopped by his crack defense. Out of the inbound, Devin is going at the rookie again and gets a huge dunk with a minute left in the game. Kevin Durant is being guarded 
guarded by Blake Griffin and gets a tough shot to go in. The Beavers are really taking advantage of the young fella. They have scored six consecutive points against Cade, but the Nets make a terrible mistake. They throw an alley-oop to Andre Drummond, which gets intercepted. However, the Beavers give the Nets another opportunity. They give the ball to Lamar Odom, who just simply steps out of bounds. Kevin Durant shoots another contested shot and misses. The Beavers get the rebound and the Nets are forced to foul from here on out and the Nets lose 39 to 46. There's no huge standouts in this game. Everybody played fairly well on the Beavers. Kevin Durant led the Nets with 14 points. Kyrie had nine and Cade Cunningham was not to be found. I simulated one game for the Grizzlies and Warriors matchup and I noticed that these teams were not advancing to the finals like I have the settings set. So I simulated the rest of the games and made sure the teams that won the first game advanced to the finals. The Beavers did have the best record in the entire NBA. So once again, they have the home court advantage. It took almost two minutes for the first points to be scored, but Desmond Bain is found open for a three pointer in the corner. Again, the Beavers are leaving the corners open. John Morantz hits a long two pointer. The Grizzlies have much better defense inside compared to the Nets. Jaron Jackson blocks Blake Griffin inside here. Dylan Brooks gets open off a screen and dunks it. The Grizzlies are now up seven to zero. It took three and a half minutes for the Grizzlies to score, but they find Lamar Odom for a three pointer. John Morant misses, but Stephen Adams is able to go right around Tristan Thompson and get a put back in traffic. Lamar Odom is about to take over this game. He gets an and one on John Morant. This man is casually hooping like he's playing on a rehab center court. He knocks down a mid ranger and has single handedly brought the lead down to two points. Blake Griffin gets a block and Ben Simmons is unreal in 2K. He gets a 360 alley oop dunk. Devin Booker misses, but Blake Griffin is there to clean up. If he can dunk over Akia, he can dunk over Kyle Anderson and his big forehead. Blake gets another mismatch inside and is able to score, bringing the Beavers lead up to four. Jaron Jackson, I don't know where this comes from, but he knocks it down. Blake Griffin is simply going off at this point. Must have gotten some of Lamar's secret stuff. The Beavers get a steal here and Dylan Brooks treats Kyle Kuzma like he's Gary Payton the second. John Morant gets a simple wide open layup. It looks like Ben Simmons gets fouled here, but they don't call it and he still makes a shot. Kyle Anderson hits a wide open corner three. And at the end of the second quarter, it seemed like neither team could miss. We go into the end of the first half, 18 to 23. James Harden is double teamed, so he decides to politely just hand the ball off to Steven Adams in the middle of the air. The Grizzlies are still hot. Desmond Bain hits this contested floater. Dylan Brooks again is wide open off a screen and dunks it, bringing the lead down to one. James Harden apparently prefers to shoot contested shots, but he makes this one. John Morant, for some reason, just doesn't feel like dunking it in this game, so he just keeps shooting layups, but that's that's all right. It's not like I want that content. For a couple minutes, these teams were just exchanging shots, but Steven Adams gets an offensive rebound, kicks it out to Desmond Bain, and he hits a three, which takes back the lead for the Grizzlies. Steven Adams is hot, so he throws down a powerful, unathletic dunk. Devin Booker could have thrown it to an open, rolling Blake Griffin, but instead dribbles it off Steven Adams' leg. The Grizzlies go ahead and find Dylan Brooks for a three-pointer, and they now have a seven-point lead. But Ben Simmons is here to save the day. He does way too much dribbling, but still finds a way to score inside. I don't know how this pass gets through, but let's not talk about it. James Harden finds Tristan Thompson for an alley-oop dunk, and it is a one-point game going into the fourth quarter. Tyus Jones somehow throws Tristan Thompson onto the ground and manages to draw a foul on this shot. He hits both free throws and Jaron Jackson goes on to score right past Tristan Thompson. But James Harden makes a nice move and gets a layup on the left side. I don't know where Tristan Thompson went, but he sure is in playing defense inside. But Lamar Odom has crackhead energy. Ben Simmons finds him open for an alley-oop. For once, my team is able to stop Tyus Jones thanks to Lamar Odom. And James Harden with another nice move ties the game up at 39 points with three minutes left. Blake Griffin commits a soft foul on John Morant's dunk. John is now hyping up all 30 Memphis fans that were allowed into the country. Country. Again, Blake Griffin is open on the roll, but James Harden decides to hit a double step back and shoot a deep contested three-pointer. Dylan Brooks is a big body. He hits his shot in traffic and brings the lead back up to five for the Grizzlies. Don't worry, Lamar Odom is here to save the day. He's open for a three-pointer and hits it. And with 20 seconds left, they finally give the ball to Blake Griffin inside, who dunks it with ease. The game is now tied up with 14 seconds left in the game. Off the inbound, John Morant had Ben Simmons beat, but he lets him recover and ends up missing a shot. And this would have been awesome if it went in, but Devin Booker doesn't do much, shoots a contested three and misses. We're going to overtime, tied at 44. Going into overtime, it's Kyle Kuzma time. They clear out the left side of the floor and he finds a way to get double teamed and blocked. Ben Simmons manages to bring the ball inside and he's fouled on the shot. I don't know why they would do that. He's never going to make that. The Beavers offense has grown stagnant, so Dwayne Casey daps up his secret weapon and sends him in the game for Rick Fox. Ben Simmons again hits two clutch free throws in a row. The Grizzlies throw the ball off Ben Simmons' head. Lamar gets the ball and finds Devin Booker for a fast break dunk, bringing the Beavers up one. In typical 2K offense, everyone is standing around
round, but Blake Griffin barely makes contact on the screen and Booker hits a big time three with just over a minute remaining in overtime. And Lamar Odom with the defensive play of the game, he blocks Dylan Brooks twice in one possession. They then find Ben Simmons with a much smaller Tyus Jones guarding him and they bring the lead up to six. Steven Adams gets fouled on the putback, but he misses both free throws and the Grizzlies are now forced to foul. The Beavers go on to hit all of their free throws and win the NBA Finals. And the player of the game is none other than Lamar Odom. He really is my favorite player on this team and would have thrived in today's NBA. He had 12 points and three blocks. Ben Simmons had 12 points and four steals, one with his head. Dylan Brooks led the Grizzlies with 12 points, followed by John Morant with 11, six, and three. That's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I wanna give thanks to Chris Jenner and Ray J because without them, none of this would be possible. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.